I read about Paul, Peter, Silas in prison, beaten, persecuted, and I think how fortunate I am. Because in other countries in the world, that is what happens to Christians. They are persecuted. They are killed. They are ostracized. But you know what? It happens every day to Christians everywhere. And it has happened to me when I would say to someone, no, thank you. I don't want to drink alcohol or I don't do this or these worldly pleasures are not for me. I've actually been mocked and persecuted for this, these type of things. Because years ago, when you didn't belong to the right church, you weren't given a specific job that you applied for. But Jesus said that we are not exempt from persecution, that we actually should expect it. He says in Luke 6.22, Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you, when they revile you and spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. Behold, your reward is great in heaven. So any hostility with that you experience from the world, from people who live worldly, who do not espouse Jesus and everything that he stands for and holiness because of your identification with Jesus, those feelings, you, you will get them. You will, you will be ostracized. You will be told you are not part of our group anymore. And that, that's why Peter wrote in 1 Peter 4, 12, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice! If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. If anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. Because indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ will be persecuted. That is what Paul writes in, in 2 Timothy 3.12. If you want to live for the Lord in purity, you will be persecuted. You will be questioned. People will question your, your mannerisms, the things you do, the fact that you don't want to be part of sinful things. And then in Matthew 10, Jesus wrote, You will be hated for my name's sake, but when you endure to the end, you will be saved. This is not saved by grace, by Jesus Christ. This is totally something different. Because the disciple is not above the teacher. We are not better than Jesus to expect that we will not be persecuted. Uh, we, uh, nor is a servant above his master. If it's, it is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the servant like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So when you are ill-treated, or mocked because of Jesus Christ. You should be so glad because he says this is going to happen. But for those who are persecuted, in Job 8 verse 21, it says, He will fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with shouting. Those who hate you will be clothed with shame and the tent of the wicked, it will be no more. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, that you always have our back and you are there to help us out. Even if people treat us in a horrible way or they spurn us or they push us out of their group, when they hear that we don't do certain things because of the glory of Jesus, that we want to honor you, that is what happens. But we want to give you glory that you will help us. In the name of Jesus, Amen.